I would say uh, NATO has never been as as critical as it is today um, since its beginning, um, back dating back to the um, Cold War. And um, of course, we're seeing a renewed focus on NATO's core mission, which is territorial defense in Europe. What we're also seeing um, an increasing focus on, on global threats, which is why not only NATO's core alliance members um, are really key to the alliance, but also its partnerships. So NATO is placing a lot of importance in its partnerships with, um, with other partners, um, including in the Indo-Pacific, um, but also other global partners that are really elevating its importance across the world. Now we have a presidential election uh, coming up. Of course, President Biden uh, struggling and, and getting a lot of flack from just about everywhere from his presidential debate performance a couple of weeks ago. Uh, but how is he going to perform during the summit? I think it's a question on many people's minds. But at least looking at President Biden and, and the way he looks at NATO and the usefulness of NATO uh, compared to his presidential challenger, former President Donald Trump, and how he uh, looks at NATO and what he thinks NATO should or should not be used for. How would you compare the two? I think the major difference is that President Biden is very focused on uh, maintaining alliance cohesion. He's very focused on, on building consensus across the alliance, which is really critically important, important as well when it comes to the um, NATO's ability to deter threats um, whereas, of course, under President Trump's previous leadership, we had seen more of a bilateralization of relationships, more of a transactional approach to relations with individual allies. Um, so that is a, um, an expectation if, if he were to come to power again, that that might be the case again in the future, um, where individual relationships with individual allies would play a more important role and could, of course, become more politicized as well. What would have to come out of this summit in order for it to be effective or to call it successful? Absolutely. Well, everyone is looking um, towards the outcome regarding Ukraine, regarding the future path to membership for Ukraine. And I think it's a question of how strong the language will be. Um, most countries and, and analysts in, in different NATO countries are hoping for stronger language regarding Ukraine's membership or Ukraine's path to membership in the future than we saw at the Vilnius summit last year. Um, there's a lot of effort being placed into um, determining the language ahead of time, so, so there's no um, discord during the summit or um, active debate. Um, so I think a stronger language on Ukraine would be key, a clear path that makes clear that NATO, uh, that Ukraine will in the future be part of NATO um, is one of the key deliverables. And I think there's, there's a lot of other, other things that um, analysts are watching for as well. For instance, NATO is, um, is making decisions to resource its defense plans, which are the mo most robust defense plans since the Cold War. So this is also, uh, in many ways, a summit that will ensure that NATO has the capabilities that it needs to um, defend its territory and to make sure that the strategic plans that it's um, outlining are actually implementable and that it can defend every inch of the alliance.